Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome back to the ongoing graphics week here. Uh, today we are talking about Vectory 3.0, and the student among you might go, Hey, wait a minute, you lazy bastard, didn't you just do a video about Vectory? And yeah, I did, actually. It was back in October the 4th I covered Vectory, and the reason why we are revisiting it today is because Vectory 3 was released. So this is an update. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about what Vectory is all about, because I have covered it in the past, and a lot of the changes are... Um, either smaller or UI or workflow related. So I will give you a quick look at some of the new functionality, uh, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of depth. Instead, I will link to this original video where I can show you what Vectory is all about. So now is where I turn a bunch of you off because I'll give you a top level summary of Vectory. It is browser-based 3D and it is subscription-based. There is a free version available and one of the major things that they've done with Vectory 3.0 is restructured uh, the way that subscriptions work. So I know a lot of people, it's very polarizing 3D or web, web browser based software. Some people love it, some people hate it, and I get it. Some people's workflow, it works for you. Some people would much rather have um, no need for an internet connection and their own standalone local install. I get that completely. And I also understand that um, subscription or subscriptions are a completely polarizing subject. I get that as well. So first, let's take a look at what is new in Vectory 3, and then I'll demonstrate a couple of the new features. So first off, we have, um, they're kind of focusing more and more on AR. Uh, I guess a majority of their users come down that a lot of people are doing it for web and Facebook 3D posts. So they've kind of done a lot of their new functionality structure towards that functionality. Um, and they're really kind of moving towards the same method as Clara IO. A lot of this whole uh, huge library of um, objects for you to use and compose to create your scenes. And then, of course, modeling tools for creating your own custom content. So a lot of what they've done here is streamlining the UI. They've created a new tutorial step-by-step -step to get you started. Uh, they've added deformers and generators. These are things like booleans, bends, twists, and so on that can be used to modify an underlying object. Uh, we've got parametric primitives. This is... Um, raw primitives that you can change the creation functions over time. Um, so, you know, as you can see in this example here, you could create and change the radius and subdivide um, the sphere you're creating. And it will update in real time. Uh, again, more UI changes to their uh, library functionality, which we'll see in a second. I know this is a near and dear one to a number of people. They've added dark mode. I will demonstrate dark mode in this particular example. Don't worry. And again, the huge changes to subscription plans and packages. What they've done, as far as I can tell, it looks like they've stripped back the functionality a little bit on the free version. And now the free version does give you 100% of the design tools um, up to three projects and you can import 2D and 3D files and you can export out up to one gig of AR web 3D traffic with a watermark and that's it. So the challenge here is if you want to in integrate this guy into your own workflow, if you want to use it for um, level prototyping to export out to Unity or uh, Blender for finishing or whatever, you will now need this premium tier uh, to have that export of 2D and 3D files. On top of that, you also get up to 100 personal projects. Again, you have the same design tools on both levels. So you have 100% of the editing functionality either way. But the exporting um, is really limited or basically non-existent on the free tier except for this Vectory Viewer thing, which includes a watermark. In the case of a premium, it does not include a watermark. And then on top of that, you have company level and studio level scaling, which is basically just the same thing, just a whole lot more people and traffic involved. And the price scales up uh, equivalently. So uh, that is their new structure. The big thing is we've gone from $19 a month to $9 a month, which definitely makes things more affordable. Uh, but the question mark ultimately is going to be, is there enough here to convince people to pay $9 a month as opposed to just using, um, you know, the, the alternatives, Clara IO or just Blender, or Max Maya or whatever. Now, compared to Max or Maya, this is an absolute bargain. Uh, compared to Blender, well, it's, it's infinitely more expensive. So is there enough here to justify that functionality? So now what we're going to do is a quick look at Vectory, most specifically on the uh, new functionality that has been added. So let's come on in here. We can see we can create a new product from the dashboard in the free tier. You can have up to three of these. Go ahead and create it and let it fire up. So once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and switch to dark mode. So you see here, you go into settings and then you just go to dark mode and boom, we are now in dark mode. Uh, I believe you could change this by changing out the background color, uh, but this is dark mode for people that 
prefer it for some reason. Uh, your standard editing environment is set up such this way. You've got your primitives and so on, cameras, lights, um, arrays of objects, booleans, and so on, all available right here. Uh, there is import functionality so you can bring in such as DAE or OBJ files. Um, then once you've got an editable polygon, you can come into edit mode here and you can do things like bevel, extrude, and so on. Those are demonstrated in the other video, but basically there is a full functioning polygonal editor in here. And then we've got the library and the library is an area that got a big facelift. So you can see here, you've got collections and then you can come through and bring in assets. You can bring in materials and you can bring in, um, uh, environmental lighting environments that have been pre-configured for you. So for example, if we wanted to come in here and we were building a cityscape, we could come on down here, grab some roads or parks or whatever to put down, some houses from their, their huge library here. We bring in this guy here. Now, one of the things I have noticed, oh, and you see there's traditional editing features so you can resize it. And as you can see, this could be great for quick level prototyping and so on, especially with this uh, heavy duty integration. I think most of this stuff is from um, Poly, so we got Vectory, Google Poly, the Noon Project, Sketchfab, and My Mini Factory is where these sources are coming from. Now, one thing that I found as a major flaw in Vectory 3.0, and this is kind of breaking, to be honest. Hopefully, this is fixed really quick. If I came in here, I wanted to find just goats. I would come in here and search for goat, and filtering seems to be broken. And when you've got thousands upon thousands of models in here, that's a big deal. So hopefully that gets resolved really fast. Again, we also have materials here. So for example, I come back here to the objects menu and I created a parametric. So here I can show you the parametrics as well. So I'm gonna create a cube in our world. You'll notice I can now change the parameters on the fly. I can change the number of segments on the fly probably don't want to go that high, like so. And then um, I'll go ahead and I'll turn that into geometry. So we've got access to our editing tools now, right here. And so you see you've got uh, things like, if I go into polygonal mode, I have access to things like extrude. And we can do traditional modeling this way, or I could switch into edge mode, grab that edge right there, for example. And I could switch over here to bevel. So those are the kind of modeling tools that you have available to you, the parametric creation. And then now that I've created said object, I can come back over here to the library, uh, grab a material for it and apply that material to our object. Uh, we can also change out, ooh, some UV mapping issues going on there. Uh, we can change out the quality of our render right here. Uh, so our preview render over here. Uh, we can change between textured, shaded, and wired, and so on right here. And then when you're done, if you had the premium version, you could come down here and go ahead and do an export. But as you're seeing, we are locked out from being able to export out to these things. So this is where their big upgrade hook is. Um, it would actually be kind of interesting if they did it. Nah, I was going to say on a per transaction basis, you could say like pay X amount per export, but that would get really annoying really quick too, to be honest. Now, what you can do um, on any version is you can create a generate an embed that you can put in your own website on a Facebook post or whatever. Uh, but you can see that that is very much where Vectory 3 is going. So what they've done again is they've halved the cost or more than half the cost of their subscriptions, but made subscriptions kind of more essential to getting any value out of this. Otherwise, you can mostly just come in here now and edit and play around with things, um, but you, you can't really, you don't have a useful end result unless you subscribe. So I know that uh, the value proposition isn't going to be there for everybody. And I'd be interested in hearing, is it there for you? Do you see $9 a month value in Vectory? And again, I'm not going through the details uh, in real depth. So if you want to see more about Vectory, do check this video. I'll link that as well. But is there enough stuff here of interest to you to make this worthwhile or nah? No, not at all. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be interested in hearing. And yeah, that's about it. So that is Vectory 3.0 has been released. Uh, half the price and different functionality and a much cleaner, newer UI. Oh, and I didn't show you generators. Sorry, I missed one thing. <coughs> now I have generators. So I can come in here. I can apply something like a bend to our object. And we have parametric control. This is like modifiers in Max and um, actually modifiers in Blender as well. Uh, it does give you rapid control and you'll notice that the generator takes ownership of the object that it is modifying. So that is the other new thing added in this feature. Almost forgot about that one. So we got the dark mode, we got the change in price, we've got the generators, we have the UI being updated and fixed. 
And that's about it. So let me know what you think of all of that in the comments down below. Again, I know some people hate browser-based and I know a lot of people hate subscriptions. So this one is going to probably be quite polarizing, but it is a rather unique tool. It and Clara IO are kind of the only real browser-centric complete creation kits. So I'd be interested to hear if, if you see a use here or not so much. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.